Happy February! We are going to be talking about, in this video, everything that you, being your PTO, should be taking care of in February. So we're going to be covering what officers and committee chairs should be stepping up and making sure that they are taking care of this month. So let's get right to it. So for presidents, I want you to keep continuing kind of to do what you were doing in January, looking at the upcoming calendar, seeing what you need to be planning for, queuing up other officers and committee chairs to make sure that they're on task, and also at the same time kind of preparing for the end. So I want you to be getting you know things out of your house that belong to the PTO and back into the PTO storage closet. Once you start going through your binder, getting that in order, even if you are not stepping out of your role, it's good to at least once a year kind of go through what you have and assess what you need so that you can better prepare for the next year. So if you are staying, if you anticipate that you will be staying on as president, then for sure do this because a prepared and planned out president is a calm president, is a happy president in my view. And so a lot of times what you did this year is probably what you're going to do this next year as far as programming, especially if it worked. So you really know kind of what to expect. And so you can start planning for that now and putting in place the tweaks that you need to make for things that didn't work, wanted them to. If you are in charge of the nominating committee, you need to be really filling in that slate hard. So you need to be finding other volunteers to step up. First, you want to be checking with people who are currently in the positions to see if they would like to stay on. That is, if they are not term limited by your bylaws or standing rules, and then ask them what they want to do. And then you need to find new people, if if need be, to fill the open positions. So usually nominating committees are in charge of finding volunteers to fill the most major roles of the PTO. So that is usually the executive board and occasionally some committee chairs. But again, you're going to have to look at your group's bylaws and or standing rules for the details. A word of caution kind of for nominating committee peoples is just don't just take the same people who were in the position and just say, hey, do you want to do it again if they are not doing their job? So if they are, have been fabulous or you see the potential for fabulousness, I guess, <laughs> like if they weren't totally consistent, but you see that they mostly did a good job and you think they would do a good job going forward, then great. Go ahead and see if they would like to stay in that position and slate them, them for that position. But really the job of the nominating committee is to look at the talent pool of all potential volunteers and kind of fill in the puzzle with the pieces that fit like the right pieces. You know how like when you're doing a puzzle, you might have a piece that fits, but when you look like so the everything lines up, except for when you look at the picture, it doesn't line up. Then that that's kind of the same thing you have in PTO world where you have people that could that could technically fit in multiple places, but they only have like one good fit. Usually people have more than one good fit. But you understand what I'm trying to say with example. So like don't just take it for granted. Really look at the available time and talents available with your volunteer pool and see what the best combination you can come up with is. That is your whole goal. For fundraising chairs, if you have a spring fundraiser, you're going to really want to get everything in line and really you want to be ideally doing your fundraiser before spring break because people are going to just tune out after that fact. So you're going to want to be doing any prep work that you need to do to get that fundraiser done because if we're in February, that means you probably only have like um, under two months to get this done. So probably six or seven weeks. So you're going to want to continue with doing your marketing and promotion of the fundraiser. And don't just rely on sending emails or flyers home. What I have done very recently to try and boost participation in a fundraiser was that I looked at all uh, of the parents that I knew. I looked at my network. I actually went and grabbed my son's yearbook from last year because I have post-pandemic, I have trouble thinking of people because I haven't seen them. So they're like out of 
out of sight, out of mind sort of things. I grabbed the yearbook and looked at all the kids in his class and was like, oh, I know their parent. I have their email address. And I reached out to them and I said, here is a flyer because I made up a separate flyer just to kind of promote the fundraiser. And I put everything that was going on. It's actually for the senior class. So I said, hey, here's this here's a flyer for everything going on for the senior class. And it was really to promote our fundraiser that we have going on right now. But I did it under the guise of, hey, I thought you would want to be in the know. And so I asked them, I said, this is for you and for any other senior parents that you know. So I specifically asked them to pass it along. And don't you know, I did get some fundraiser participants that I had not specifically reached out to. So obviously people were seeing it and responding. So super awesome way to boost participation is that one-on-one. You might not have time to do it for everybody, but even if you do it for 10 or 15 people, it is going to make a difference. So invest in that time. For your family event chairs, Again, look at what you have left on the calendar. Keep lining up those volunteers. Reach deep. Do the same thing that I just talked about for fundraising, like to boost participation, and do that to get new volunteers. Reach out one-on-one. That was the way that I had the biggest success getting new volunteers at the elementary level because when you make a legitimate and genuine connection with someone and you say, I really need your help for this, or which of these events would you like to help with because I know you want your kid to have a fun rest of the year, Where how how can I count on your help? They're going to feel obligated. They're going to feel like they want to do it because you are reaching out to them individually and kind of reinforcing that connection in that relationship. And so you can kind of use that. It's not being manipulative at all. It's just kind of asking for their help because you need it in a genuine way. And they're going to feel like doing it more so than if they would have just heard it Um, if they happen to be in the school for a morning announcement or if they just saw it on Facebook, right? Because they can feel like you specifically need them. All too often what happens with those kind of like all calls that we put out, people think other people are responding. They believe other people are stepping up and that they they don't need to because there's plenty of help and that you would have reached out to them because you've said before you would help with anything and that because you're not specifically reaching out you must be all good so when that is totally not the case when you as the organizing volunteer are probably thinking like oh my gosh i put out this all call why isn't suzy q and and debbie like responding right they're waiting for that personal invitation. So go ahead and reach out to them. And if you don't have enough time, enlist somebody who doesn't have that much going on right now, who's on the board, who can help you reach out to. For staff appreciation, hey, the end of the year is just around the corner. So you want to start kind of formulating your plans for staff appreciation week or teacher appreciation week, whatever you happen to call it in your school. And teacher appreciation week is officially like the first full week in May, but really any time is a good time to show some love to the teachers and staff. So don't wait until then if you don't want. If you have time to do a couple extra things, fantastic. They will love you for it. For the membership chair, guess what? The end of the year also brings orientations and new family meetings for all the new families who are coming in. So that is a great opportunity to introduce your PTO to these newbies and kind of get them hooked. I highly recommend that the membership chair and even the president attend the new family orientations or the gatherings, whatever kind of meetings your school has set up. Ask the principal if you can go. It'll be a great way, like I said, to introduce yourself to the PTO. Let You can let them know, or introduce them to the PTO rather. You can let them know kind of what you have on tap for the next year. If you don't have plans set, then you can just kind of explain what the PTO does in your school, like review, take your greatest hits from this past year and kind of let them know about it. And then if you have any summer gatherings to kind of connect people, um, connect families, get have people, have the parents get to know one another, have the kids get to know one another, let them know about it right then. Give them a way to sign up to stay in the loop. If you have a Facebook page, you can go ahead and mention that. Give them a QR code to your mailing list to sign up. Whatever you want to do, make that connection. You're not going to get a ton of response, but you're probably going to get about five people, which is five more than you had. So that is a great way to kind of get the ball rolling for the next year. So those are kind of the major things that your PTO should be paying attention to this month. I hope you are enjoying this series, and I will be back again in March with another video about what you need to be doing 
during that month as we get really close to the end of the year and time for summer break. Hallelujah. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that I will see you in the next one. Want even more guidance on how to be a stronger leader so you can run a better PTO or PTA? All these resources and more are waiting for you at ptoanswers.com.